Hey, what is going on, veterans? How is everybody doing today? Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, my name is Coach Stacy Allen, and joining me today is my friend and colleague, Coach Rochelle Seabury. Hey, Rochelle, how are you doing? Today? Hi there. Hello, Coach Stacy. How's everyone doing today? Thanks for joining us. Today, we have a great topic. Uh, we're going to be talking about chronic fatigue syndrome, CFS. If you'd like to learn more about our elite program, um, you can have a free 30 minute call with one of our business development representatives and they can tell you all about the program. Um, and we will get that up on the screen there in just a second. There it is. Thank you so much. So vacifree30.com. So Rochelle, why don't you, uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Okay, thanks. Um, I'm Coach Rochelle Seabury. Um, I've been with the company for almost two years, coming this October. Uh, I am not a veteran, so a non-veteran. However, I did grow up a Navy brat. My dad served 21 years in the Navy, um, moved around a lot, and then now I um, am currently serving with a lieutenant colonel in the Army, so we are still active duty, still moving around a lot. Nothing about that in my life has changed, but I love it. When I joined BACI, uh, I found such an amazing family here and from the coaches to the veterans and of course my veteran spouses and families, everyone is such an important part of this process. I love what I do and I thank you all for your service and I'm happy to be able to help veterans get the disability rating they deserve. So my name is uh, Stacy Allen. I am a Gulf War vet. I served uh, from 87 to 93 in the Army. Um, in the medical profession, uh, Desert Storm vet. I got out in 93, like I said, and I went into uh, federal service, just retired back in 2019. But a couple of years before I retired, I was having a conversation and she said, you know, uh, you're Desert Storm vet. That's a, that's a presumptive condition. I, I didn't even know what presumptive meant. Yeah. What is that? <laughs> um, so in 2017, I filed my first claim. So 20, 24 years after I got out of the military, I filed my first VA claim. Uh, for a presumptive condition and service connected. Um, then I, you know, I, I started eating it up. I started learning and educating myself. I became a, I became a client of VA Claims Insider and uh, helped me through the process. Today, I'm 100% permanent in total. And, uh, and I owe it all to VACI. So like I said, I retired a couple of years ago. And the first thing I did was like, I need to come on and pay this forward. This is just absolutely amazing. So that's my story. That's why I'm here. And, and again, thank you everyone for being here with us today. That's an amazing testimony, Coach Stacy. And, you know, um, in being with the company and working with as many vets as we do, that's pretty much a lot of the case uh, for a lot of vets, not knowing what they deserve, not knowing what they can go for, what they qualify for, not knowing about, you know, the benefits, period. So it, it is truly amazing that, you know, every time I come around someone who is absolutely grateful for the services we offer and the education that we provide and walking them through this process as complicated and confusing as it is, um, I love how everyone pays it forward, right? The community that we have is so giving because of how much they are, they, they receive and how much, how life-changing a lot of uh, these benefits are. So um, it's amazing your story and, and thanks for, you know, doing what you do as well. So let's, um, let's dig into this a little bit. Uh, we're talking about chronic fatigue syndrome. And Rochelle, you learned a new word, right? <laughs> yes, yes. And I practiced it. And, and I'd like you guys to add this to your vocabulary, right? So we call it chronic fatigue syndrome, we'll probably refer to it as CFS this entire presentation. But I will say uh, another terminology, if you guys have been called by a doctor or diagnosed with this is myalgic, encephalomyelitis. Let's say that again. Myalgic encephalomyelitis, ME, or they, they also uh, refer to it as post-exertional malaise. Myalgic encephalomyelitis. Yep. Got it. Nailed it. So <laughs> Nailed all of you listening, learn that word. I think for the remainder of this talk, we're just going to refer to it as CFS yes, or chronic please. fatigue syndrome. Right? <laughs> please. Right. So, so what is it? What is chronic fatigue syndrome? 
Um, you got a little information on that? So Rochelle? that is a loaded question, which we'll definitely get to, but it is arguably one of the most misunderstood and underdiagnosed VA disabilities. It's the hardest part. Uh, the hardest part about filing for CFS is getting diagnosed in the first place, right? So, I mean, it, it's possible. They've got the rating code for it. They've got the criteria that it meets. However, a lot of it comes with ruling out other symptoms. So we'll kind of uh, get into that. Um, it, it is service connected. They did a little bit of research for us here um, in uh, the last published report in 2020. Uh, chronic fatigue syndrome was service connected for 14,447 veterans. That's about 26.06% of all infection immune nutrition claims uh, filed with the VA for compensation. And then of that, only 5,745 claims were from Gulf War veterans, which is only about 46.34% of all Gulf War illness claims. So, well, and that's, and that's actually kind of surprising because, mm -hmm. you know, when we talk about chronic fatigue syndrome, most of the time we automatically think Gulf War because it's, it's a presumptive condition, kind of what I was talking about earlier with my own, uh, with my own story. So chronic fatigue syndrome for Gulf War veterans, and for those of you that some sometimes it's confusing, what is a Gulf War veteran? Well, it's anybody that served over in, in specific theaters of operation in the Middle East from 1990 to present, okay? Um, there are some, some exceptions over there, and, and we can get into the details of that uh, a little bit further as we get into Q&A. Um, but yeah, it's somewhat surprising that less than half of, of the people that were service connected for chronic fatigue syndrome were Gulf War vets. Less than half. That's that really kind of blew my mind when I saw that stat. Right. Okay, so you you mentioned it's a rule out disorder. Yeah. <laughs> rule out disorder. What does that actually mean? So because CFS is characterized by extreme fatigue uh, that it can't be explained by any specific medical condition, right? Uh, this condition affects many of the body's systems, which affect your ability to like carry out your usual activities. And sometimes it can confine you to your bed. So medically, being that there is no way to test if you're positive or CFS, um, they do the rule out method. So there are some conditions that they must rule out. So let's talk symptoms, right, uh, of rule out. So sleep disorders is one of the main ones, right? Your chronic fatigue may be due to an underlying sleep disorder. So they don't test you for CFS, but they'll rule out if, for example, they might send you to go get a sleep study done, right? And then maybe if you test positive for a sleep study or you don't, then that rules out um, that sleep disorder and that it might be done uh, to rule out that condition right so so digging into that just a little bit more if if let's say i i went in i had this fatigue all the time and went in and had a sleep study and it came back and they said well well stacy you have sleep apnea that would kind of be an explanation for my fatigue right um, because right. maybe i'm not getting restful sleep at night and that could be the reason for my fatigue Right. So that would actually make that chronic fatigue syndrome diagnosis a little bit harder exactly. to get because there's an explanation for my fatigue, right? Exactly. Um, and there is a link to uh, our recent blog post for CFS, or what's the other word? Myalgic Myal encephalomyelitis. <laughs> Love it. So we were talking about some of the conditions to rule out. You, you mentioned maybe sleep disturbances and, mm -hmm. you know, your doctor may uh, recommend that you have a sleep study. What, uh, what other kind of conditions can maybe mimic or, or make you think you might yeah. have CFS? There, there are other like medical problems that have similar uh, fatigue symptoms, right? Fatigue is a common symptom for several medical conditions like anemia. That's something I suffer from. Um, extremely tired. Um, you know, we might call it laziness sometimes, but there's sometimes a, you know, a, an answer or, or a diagnosis there. Um, diabetes is another one. Hypothyroidism is another one. So typically 
if you file for a CFS claim, um, one of the common tests that they'll run to rule out is a blood test, right? Now, keeping in mind that a blood test cannot diagnose chronic fatigue, again, this is the rule out of the other conditions that could be causing the fatigue. I think there's, there's also heart and lung issues, right? So problems with your heart or your lungs can also make you more fatigued than normal. Um, you may undergo an exercise stress test to assess your heart and lung function. So that's another one. And then the, the big one, mental health conditions, mm -hmm. right? Uh, fatigue is also a symptom for a variety of mental health conditions in veterans, such as PTSD, uh, depression, anxiety, among many others, um, uh, among many other mental health conditions. So fatigue may also be associated with side effects of medications you're taking to help manage your mental health symptoms. Um, so a psychologist usually runs through a series of questions uh, to, to find the underlying um, symptom for your sleep impairment, as that is one of those 31 symptoms of mental health. So really what it boils down to is the severity of your symptoms, right? Right. How bad do those symptoms affect or impact your life? Right. Right. Um, uh, Rochelle, you got any maybe examples of, of some of those symptoms other than um, just being tired? Yeah, there's a lot. <laughs> there's a lot of underlying symptoms that, you know, um, kind of show that, that extreme chronic fatigue. So other than fatigue and sh uh, decreased energy, um, other than the unrefreshing sleep or sleep disruption, um, there's the intolerance, the orthostatic intolerance, what they say is the inability to sit or stand up. Um, there's unexplained muscle pains that you could be experiencing. Um, sore throats, sometimes tender lymph nodes uh, is a common one. Uh, which is why the hypothyroidism is one of those rule out conditions because it's a similar symptom. Um, you've got headaches. Now, when we talk headaches, we're talking headaches unique to the unique to the fatigue. That's different than headaches before the fatigue began, right? Um, then there's the difficulty concentrating, uh, memory problems, um, chills and night sweats, and then digestive issues. I know when I speak to a lot of my veterans, um, it's the symptoms part that's hard to identify sometimes for some of us because we're so used to just sucking it up and moving, <laughs> moving forward, not complaining, maybe attributing our symptoms to other things that like we're self-diagnosing or, you know, self connecting the dots for ourselves in regards to some of these symptoms like, oh yeah, my back hurts, but it's just old age or, you know. Right. Yeah. And boy, we are our own worst enemies when it comes <laughs> yeah. to that, because, um, yeah, don't make excuses for for your aches and pains or, or symptoms that you deal with. Find out what's really going on. And unless you have a medical degree, you know, don't be your own doctor. CFS, chronic fatigue syndrome, is a presumptive condition for Gulf War vets. So um, so what is presumptive? What does that mean? You know, you talked about the Calusa triangle a, a little bit earlier. How do those two things play together? So when, it, when you qualify for a presumptive condition, that means that the VA has acknowledged a presumed link. So you no longer need to prove that it's, um, that there's the link to military service. So that nexus has already been presumed linked. Um, how I would explain presumptive. Pretty, yeah, pretty straightforward. So we were talking about the Calusa Triangle. Now all you need is just two of those three points. Right. The diagnosis, the for sure. You cannot get anything without that right. diagnosis, right? And then that presumptive is that nexus, that link, and then kind of um, the condition in which you're tying it to service. So you need that diagnosis in your service, right? Right. But I, but for like chronic fatigue or, or many of the other Gulf War presumptives, um, the in-service event is really just being in that theater, right? Being in that area, that that presumptive area, mm -hmm. right? And then, the, like you said, the current diagnosis and then the VA concedes uh, the nexus. Really, I think the biggest emphasis on CFS is being able to talk about the frequency 
the severity and the duration of your symptoms once you're diagnosed with the CFS, right? Being able to articulate to the VA um, the, the severity of your symptoms puts you in the rating, right? Any like like Coach Stacy said earlier, anything from 10 to 100%. So the rating breakdown is that 10, 20, 40, 50, 60, and then 100. And the rating is based off of, um, that gets con considered and, and factored in is the effect and impact of the CFS on the veteran's ability to socialize and perform daily activities. That's what determines the severity of the disability. If you're not with VACI, we kind of go over the criteria needed to win a claim, right? And number one, diagnosis. No diagnosis, no service connection, right? That's just one of the three parts then. The in-service event or aggravation, whether it be direct condition or secondary condition, something that you wanna to talk to your coach about, how is your condition service connected? And then you need that nexus. What is that um, link or what is the cause and effect? How do you connect that CFS to uh, service. Um, and that is by way of medical opinion, competent medical opinion. <laughs> Absolutely. So it has to be a qualified medical professional to make that nexus. Exactly. And we, and we have a, a partnership with a company that, that can do those uh, connections for us, right? Absolutely. So, good stuff. Good stuff. Love it. Thank you. Telemedica. Uh, cost on this? So the cost is free, free to join. Right. So um, there is a fee if we help you win your claim. OK, it is six times the monthly difference uh, in your increase. Um, we're, we're very transparent with that. We do have a lot to offer. And I'll tell you, like I said earlier, I was a client. I paid my fee. There's just no way to put it into words, the benefits that you receive for the rest of your life. Right. So for me, not only the compensation, um, I live in Texas, so I don't pay property tax, which uh, for me equates almost to $10,000 a year. Amazing. Right? <laughs> My daughter is receiving about $1,300 a month to go to uh, school, Chapter 35 benefits. Um, my family is under CHAMP VA uh, health insurance, so we don't pay for health insurance now. It's just, and the list goes on and on. It's just absolutely amazing. So the dollar amount, minuscule compared to the lifetime benefits you get uh, from the VA. But if you're ready to start, um, you can start for free. Uh, speak with one of our um, business representatives at VACIFree30.com and we will get you uh, assigned to a coach and get you rolling. And uh, if a nexus letter is needed, exactly, uh, we, can, we can refer you over to Telemedica at a dis discounted rate. So again, uh, VACI elite members, get a discounted rate for uh, telemedica services and it is substantial substantially discounted okay so you do not pay vaci until you win right you owe nothing to us until you win the only things i do like to give disclaimers just for full transparency if you do need a nexus or a diagnosis or a psyche about one of the telemedica or um medical uh, documents, those are paid up front to the company because they are a separate company from us. So they do have their own fees and those fees are paid up front. If a vet wants to sign up and have uh, Rochelle be their coach, can we get her link up there? There it is. Thanks. So any of you vets out there ready to sign up and want Rochelle as your coach, there's the link. There is her link. And, uh, and, and thank then, you. There is mine as well. And uh, we would love to work with you. If, if you are still waiting and, and not sure if you're ready to pull the trigger, pull the trigger, mm. pull the trigger. Let's, let's at least take a look, right? right? Take that first step and let one of us um, take a look and see what you got. And we're going to shoot you straight. Full transparency, a lot of education, a lot of information, and then you do what you want with it. But we do encourage that you get the disability you deserve. Absolutely. Uh, thank you so much for being with us today. Love you all. Have a great day. Bye. Take care. Thank you.